Nancy, that was the administrator just sent over a message to turn you loose. It's been a very pleasant stay, Frangela. Mm-hmm. Two cards. I'll miss you, Yancey. <laughs> me too. Two for you, two for me. Oh, uh, by the way, a fellow just arrived. He said he wanted to see you. Who is it? His name is Emmett Proctor. No. Can you bring him in? Oh, sure. <laughs> Mr. Proctor? Hello, Yancey. It's good to see you, Mr. Proctor. Yancey, I could hardly believe it when Obadiah told me you were here. Oh, think nothing of it. This is sort of my second home. Pahu, I'd like to have you know Mr. Proctor, a very old friend of the family. How do you do? Is this the Indian bodyguard I've heard about? That's right. What did he say? Welcome to New Orleans. Uh, shall we say Madame Francine's for dinner? Yes, but I wanted to see you now. Fine. We'll have plenty of time to talk over dinner. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jancy. You're not going to leave now. Why, this is the best hand I've had since you. Hey, dear friend Jailer, Mr. Proctor. I just got into Baton Rouge. I've had a feeling of being followed. Were you? I don't really know. Maybe you better tell me. I'm sorry I can't. What I have to say must be said only to the administrator. You remember General Stafford up at Darien Hall in Baton Rouge? Certainly. He's one of my father's dearest friends. Matter of fact, I had the pleasure of serving under him in Virginia. I'm his private secretary. And he has possession. Yes, no. He has possession of something so completely valuable, it's frightening. Last night, he sent me down to see John Colton about the... You can't tell me what. I'm sorry, it's secret. which had never been issued to the public. I've heard of it, but I've never seen one before. Oh, it's real. Who was this man, Proctor? He was an old friend. General Stafford of Baton Rouge sent him down here last night to find you. Obviously, to give you this, he contacted me. Did he know you were my special agent? Of course not. Hmm. I can't understand this coin. It's a Confederate half dollar. Only a few were minted, then the South ran out of bullion. What is the Confederate treasure? Money, Yancey. Money. Some $500,000 of it. It was in every form. Gold ingots, silver bricks, gold double eagles. Hmm. What happened to it? Your guess is as good as mine. Mr. Colton, I think Mr. Proctor was trying to get to you to prove that... General Stafford has the half million dollars? Could be. In three years, we've had a hundred tips from a hundred different crackpots after the reward. Their avarice was obvious. Their information, ridiculous. Did I hear the word, uh, reward? Yes, $50,000. Money is one of my hobbies, you know. The last place it was traced to was to the military in Georgia, a few days after the surrender. Well, in that case, maybe the commanding general decided to keep it after the war. Oh, yeah, see, that's pretty far-fetched. But all we'd have to do is to find the general and ask him a few pertinent questions. Just what I was thinking. Who was the commanding general at the time? General Orville Staffing, Baton Rouge. Think it's worth looking into? I certainly do. 
All right, we'll leave by horseback tonight for Baton Rouge. See the general in the morning. The Sultana docks at noon. We'll load the treasure aboard, sail it down the river to your waiting hands. Well, your confidence is encouraging, but just the same. Good luck along with it. Oh. Not luck, Mr. Colton. Prosperity. I'd forgotten how beautiful the countryside north of New Orleans could be. And Darien Hall, proudly standing there defying the ravages of time and war, brought back many memories. Yes? I'm Yancey Derringer. Oh, yes, I've heard of you, Mr. Derringer. I'm Earl Bartley. How do you do? My Pawnee friend, Pavel Katiwa. What can I do for you, sir? I'd like to see the gentleman. Well, you're a little late to pay your respects, but please come in. just concluded services for the general. That's why I thought you would come. Oh, I didn't know. Hard to believe, isn't it? Grand old man. Only three days ago, he was healthy as an ox. Three days ago? Yes. Went down with his boots on. Gloria's been badly shaken. Gloria? Oh, yes, I remember. The granddaughter, freckle-faced. My fiance. Oh. We're to be married next month. Congratulations. Thank you. Would you like to see her? Please. Gloria? Hello, freckle face. Yancy. Yancy. Here, here now. No more tears. The general wouldn't have liked it. It was so awful, so sudden. Why did I have to be away when it happened? You can't blame yourself. Oh, Gloria, I know you haven't seen Sir Derringer for a long time, but we really must be leaving very shortly. You see, the general wanted to be buried in the family plot at Greenacre, so we're taking him down to New Orleans on the Sultana at noon. Of course, if there's anything I can do. Thank you, Yancy. Well, the fact is, Mr. Derringer, Gloria is selling Darien Hall. After the funeral, we're leaving for England. We'll be married quietly at sea. Now, darling, we really are late. I won't keep you. I'm sorry to have arrived at such an inopportune time. And lots of happiness. And freckle face. Thank you, Yancy. I sent Pahu out to scout because nothing added up. It was very odd that the general, who'd been dead for three days, nevertheless managed to send Emmett Proctor to New Orleans the day before. Also, Earl Bartley seemed more than just a devoted suitor. He'd moved in and taken over too fast and too well. You just don't sell a plantation like Darien Hall when it's been in the family for more than 50 years. Unless there's a plan. But what plan? Well, maybe Pahu could find something or someone that might give us a clue. conduct your funerals in an old storage room? You know, it's like they say, curiosity is what accounts for the shortage of cats. Back in the ship. All right, Roger, turn around. General Stafford! Yancey Derringer. I never thought I'd be glad to see you again, you rebel rascal, but I am. Gloria. Yancey, where's Gloria? Gone with Bartley. We'll have to go after. 
No telling what Bartley will do with her. If they recognize you, they'd shoot you down. Never you mind that. Well, you haven't got a prayer. Well, what are, we, what are we going to do? Use a little strategy. Yeah, see, that's enough of this tomfoolery. Uh, General, you just simmer down. Never get this washed off. A little lamp black never hurt anybody. Well, that's a pretty good job, General. Even your mother wouldn't recognize you. Mother? Heaven forbid she'd see me in this getup. He got away? <laughs> you just didn't hit him hard enough. I'm not just about to go through with this. No, sir, not on your life, Yancey Dillinger. Can't hurt! You're under my command, sir, and you'll obey orders. Your command, Yancey? Why, you rebel rascal, he never made more rank and captain than by connivance. The war's over. I just happened to represent the administrator of New Orleans. You? Yes, sir. You sent Emmett Proctor to see John Colton. Well, he was killed last night before he could reach him. Emmett was killed? Yes, sir. John Colton sent me here. Emmett did. It's all my fault. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, very well, Yancey, very well. See, I held that treasure all these years to help rebuild the South. But there was no one to give it to until this year. Mr. Colton come along. He may be a Yankee, but he was fair and honest. He wanted to rebuild New Orleans and Louisiana. So I figured it was time to turn it over. Well, now, we still might be able to accomplish it, sir. Well, Sultana sailed. She's gone. Well, I'll go by horseback to Port Hudson. Meet the Sultana there tonight. Well, if you can still ride a horse. I told your daddy time and time again, you'd never grow up to be anything but a cotton-picking rake heli just like him. And I was right. Well, thank you, sir. My daddy'd be proud to hear you say those words. Here a hat, General? <laughs> Yes, the general still knew how to sit a horse, and we struck south from Baton Rouge and overtook the Sultana easily at Port Hudson, where Captain Tom slipped us aboard in the dark. Nobody saw us. I hoped. Say, wasn't this your daddy's cab? Yes, sir. General, I don't want you to open your mouth all the time you're aboard. I'll do all the talking for you. And since when does a chicken-stealing captain get to do the saying for a general? Sir, you're wearing the blue. A Union officer hears the south pouring out of your mouth in that uniform. He'll have you up before a firing squad before you can whistle Dixie. I'll be the general, sir. All right, general. Please make yourself comfortable. Pa will take care of you. A full general being babied by Aborigine. Say, was this fellow in the war? Certainly, sir. Which side was he on? The side of the Indian. Cat got your tongue, son? Hi, Captain Tom. Hello, Willie. Hello, Yancy. Yancy, you don't surprise me any. I saw you come aboard at Port Hudson. Now, what you were doing there, I wouldn't know. The girls are home then. There's not a casino for miles. Can I see the bill, lady? Why, sure. How's it going, Willie? Oh, fine, fine. One casket? That's a Stafford party, cabin four. Says here you didn't weigh it. Never do. You can't penalize a family in sorrow because one fellow outweighs another. Sounds reasonable. Get the pass keys, Willie, and come with me. You bet, Nancy. Wait a second. Who's going to steer this boat? You're the captain. Last. There aren't just aboard. What? With the Indian and a Union general. I saw them. Probably telegraph ahead to New Orleans to try to stop us. But since we're not going to New Orleans, what can they do? They could do plenty. I mean, we're meeting the pickup boat at Cass's Crossing. We we'll get rid of the treasure, pull the steam valve. They can't do anything but drift. Providing they don't interfere in the meantime. See that they don't. Get them all out of there. Tell them anything. Look. 
tell them that Bartley wants to see them in the salon. Wait a minute. It might get a little rough. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Deringer. I was raised in the river. Good luck. Is? Yeah. That's no, Willie. Mr. Bartley sent me. Mr. Bartley sent me from the main salon. He wants to see you fellas right away. He did, eh? Yeah, and he said, be sure to like the cabin after you. No, yeah, that's funny. Garber said it would be our next if we left this thing alone. I know, only Bartley's the boss, not Garber. Mr. Bartley seemed very upset, like something was wrong. Well, I'll see you later. I gotta get back up to the pilot house. Oh, you're going with us. was sure if the general was alive and well in my cabin, then the loot from Richmond was playing dead in the coffin. I thought I told you to stay in your cabin. How do you know where to find me? No trouble following you, Captain. I don't know what I want to do with you, General. Just tell that savage quit following me. At least he can obey orders. Like I followed too many of your orders. He's just smarter than I am, I guess. And that's what you get when you send a boy to do a man's job. Captain. Derringer must have been quite surprised. It was Derringer, wasn't it, son? I don't know anything about this. I don't want... <coughs> what does that mean, son? I don't know what you mean, Mr. <coughs> I said, what does it mean? Cass is crossing off the bow. One whistle means we're not going to stop. Nobody gets off here. And the whistle is wrong, isn't it? You know how to steer this boat? Well, that's my job. Then you steer her just the way I tell you to, son, or your mother will never see her little boy again. Aye, aye, sir. All right, now, this is it. Garber, you transfer the treasure. You two take care of any passengers who try to interfere. I'll handle the wheelhouse. Come on. Jancy! How dare you! Get out of here or I'll call Earl. Well, that wouldn't manage to make me and your grandfather very dead if that's what you want. What are you talking about, Yancey? The general is dead. I'm afraid that that's a slight exaggeration. It's true. The services, the coffin. Did you see him dead? They wouldn't let me. They said it was too awful. And I say that he's alive and kicking right here aboard the Sultana. The thing that worries me is which side are you on? Would you like to take a look out this window? See the launch approaching? In a moment, the Sultana will heave, too. That'll mean Mr. Bartley is in charge of the ship. What's the meaning of this? Now stop the boat, Captain. Let that launch come alongside. And no whistling, please. This is piracy. Call it what you like, Captain. Just stop the boat. Get your meaning, engine. One thing is for sure. This boat stopped. Let's see what's going on.
Notice anything? There's no vibration. The boat stopped. Yancey, I don't understand. Well, it's simple. He'll put the treasure aboard the launch. Then he'll blow the boilers aboard the Sultana while we... I wouldn't, Mr. Danger. I've come to say adieu, my dear. I owe you that much, at least. I'm awfully sorry, but you won't be sailing to England with me after all. Come here, my dear. I'm sure we both agree that Gloria is a great deal more valuable than any treasure. Gloria, no. No, it's all right, Gloria. Come. General, maybe you'd better take her into the cabin. Yes, Captain. Yes. All right, Sonny, just keep lowering it down to the deck. Real easy. I'll be on the freight deck. Things are getting out of hand, friend. The loot from Richmond. A cascade of gold and silver throwing away its color in the muddy Mississippi. And I was the one who told Pahu to shoot the cotton bale. Well, it was the first half million dollar mistake I'd ever made. You stay put. the loot from Richmond was real, after all. It was very real, sir. And I deeply regret that it will not be used by you to help rebuild this city. Nevertheless, General, I'm honored that you would have turned it over to me. We'll do everything we can to salvage what's left of it. Even your $50,000. Uh -uh. You'll never find it. That old river runs hard and fast. She'll scatter that gold and silver from Port Hudson to the Gulf. Yancey's right. The Mississippi never had any respect for money. Maybe it's just as well. That money was for a cause that's lost. Maybe it's better that it's lost too. <laughs> <laughs> 